Gucci viewers and random Ghostbusters fans today, I'll be reviewing this, which is the SDCC exclusive Maddie Collector courtroom Egon figure from Ghostbusters 2. And here it is in its white mailing box, which is very basic. It features the Ghostbusters 2 logo in black and white, with Ghostbusters 2 written below, and courtroom battle Egon Spengler in memory of Harold Ramis, which is a nice touch, and is for adult collectors, while the back just contains some copyright and legal nonsense. Taking a look at the actual packaging, it's that standard Maddie Ghostbusters design with a rough Central Park West transparent window display and the terror dogs on either side. We get the Ghostbusters 2 logo on the top with Ghostbusters printed below and courtroom battle Egon Spengler at the bottom. The figure is displayed really well here as are its many accessories while you can see Mr. Stay puffed in the background. The back features that standard messy office desk design on the personnel file of Spengler featuring information alluding to Ghostbusters 2. And if you want to read it, pause the video. And I really like this, just like on the mailer box, it's dedicated to the memory of Harold Ramis. I do wish the design of this box had been at least altered slightly to say that it was an SDCC exclusive or to show that it was from Ghostbusters 2 as the design pretty much evokes the first movie but it's nice enough nonetheless. But anyway, enough about the box, let's move on to the figure itself. Okay, so here we have Courtroom Battle Egon, and yeah, he looks pretty good. I've never really been a fan of that Maddie Sixens figure head sculpt of Egon. I mean, I can sort of see Harold Ramis in there with the shape of the nose, the philtrum, and the mouth, but to be honest, it's not great. What doesn't help here is the glasses. I've always thought the frames looked far too thick, but it's nice that actual plastic lenses have been added into them. One thing they definitely got right is the hairstyle, short at the sides and long at the top. It's unmistakable. Egon style, and those thick clumps in the sculpt along with the brush strokes really give it some much needed volume. Moving down to the body, it's pretty clear that this is made from pre-existing components and as a result the way the neck is connected to the top of the torso looks very jarring and a little off for my liking. He's wearing his grey suit which could have been a bit darker in tone to match the one seen in the movie. Great sculpting on it though with the lapels on the sides of the blazer plus the green straps of the proton pack over his shoulders. You can see two buttons on the blazer as well. While the arms look pretty basic, yet the hands contain some nice detail of sculpted fingers and even some moulded cartilage or vein designs on the backs. He's wearing the correct white shirt and red polka dotted tie, as well as that grey vest which is just painted on. The proton pack is sculpted onto the back of the figure and therefore is not removable, but for its size I'm just blown away by the sheer amount of detail present on it. I mean, look at it! It's been replicated almost perfectly, what with the wires which have been sculpted onto it, the warning labels, the four red lights on the cyclotron, likewise the neutrona wand looks excellent and can be unpegged from the pack, allowing the figure to be posed while holding it. And there you can get a much better look at the wand, it's got some great silver paint apps on the barrel and on the middle there too. If you've ever bought a Manny Ghostbuster figure before, there's nothing on this pack that you haven't already seen before. Anyway, checking out the rest of the figure, you can see he's wearing a black belt with a silver buckle around his waist, while the trousers are just your basic standard Maddie leg suit sculpts, so you can make out the seams on the front and backs of the legs, a little bit of crease and wrinkled material effect, and that's about it. And finally on the feet, he's wearing some black shoes with glossy black paint apps, while underneath you can spot some legal guff and a peg hole on each sole. So overall for detail, it's sad to say, just okay. Turning to articulation, the head can do the full 360 degree exorcist twist. The arms can do a full 360 at the shoulder. I'll move out to, uh, what's that, around 120 degrees. Another 360 has been included at the top of the arm. There's about a 45 degree bend on the elbow. While the hand can do a full 360 at the wrist. Egon features full 360 degree waist articulation. The legs kick forward to around 45 degrees and can move out to the sides at this joint also. The legs also feature a full 360 degree joint near the tops, a 45 degree bend on the knee and a little bit of ankle pivot at the bottom there. So when it comes to articulation, it's fur at best. Taking a look at accessories now, and these have to be the saving grace of the figure as we just get so much. First up is this sort of scanning device with a silver sieve-like section on the front, thick hand grip and silver readout display on the top. This can be placed into the figure's hand if so desired. Next is the Gigameter, which is silver instead of black, but we do get the rough detail of that sphere on the bottom, those silver moving ears at the end, and readout display on the top. Again, this has a nice big handle on the top of it so the figure can hold it very easily. As for this, well, 
I, I, I don't know what this is. A, a silver microphone? It's the device Ray was using to scan Vigo's painting. I know that much. Not a lot of detail to talk about on here, but yet again, the figure can just about hold it. I really think this is a great little inclusion, the Ghostbusters Thermal Mug. I'm half expecting to see some free balloons for the kids inside it. It's white with the blue label that features the Ghostbusters 2 logo and is an excellent addition. A large magnifying glass comes with the figure. It doesn't actually magnify anything, but it's the one used by Egon to examine the photographs taken of the Vigo the Carpathian painting. We also get a large silver ladle. Again, this is pretty basic, but I love that touch of the mood slime residue on it there. But why? Oh why? Wasn't a jar of mood slime included with this figure? I mean, the mood slime jar would have been the perfect accessory to include here, as the Scolari brothers already come with the courtroom Venkman and stands, so the mood slime beaker would have really completed the set. Moving on to the final two accessories, we have this black ghetto blaster cassette tape player, and very 80s it is indeed. Great detail on here with the handle, buttons on the top, and tape player door on the front with the speakers on either side. Perfect for playing a bit of Jackie Wilson. And speaking of which, we also get a toaster to dance to the cassette player's music. I mean, what really can I say about this? It's a basic grey toaster with the lever at one side and toast sticking out of the slots at the top. It's also hollow for some reason. And it doesn't actually dance. Boo! But seriously, all in all, some great accessories here. Doing a size comparison, Egon fits in well with the other two Maddie Courtroom Ghostbuster figures, as well as the Scolari brothers, and this pretty much makes up an excellent Ghostbusters 2 figure display. So overall, what do I think of this figure? Well, while I do have some issues with it, I can't help but like it for the sole fact that, as you've just seen, it completes the courtroom figure variants from the second movie. And I love being able to display them in that classic Do-Re-Egon setup. Yes, I do find some of its defects to be rather irritating. I hate that this is basically just a Frankenstein's monster of a figure with parts borrowed from other existing Maddie figures and then given a repaint. And I've never really been a fan of that head sculpt on the 6-inch Egon figures either. Great amount of accessories here, although I think they missed a trick by not including a beaker of mood slime. And seeing as this is an SDCC exclusive, maybe a courtroom bench where all these accessories could be displayed should have been included too. I just think that... That would have really set off the three figures when on display. In the end, yes, I'd recommend this to hardcore ghost heads for the simple completists out there who need to get the three GBs in their courtroom attire. But for an STCC exclusive, and particularly as a tribute to Harold Ramis, as the box says, I really think this figure could have been much better. And so that does it for this review. I really hope you liked it. If you did and you're new to my channel, please hit subscribe for more videos and keep up to date with all my latest news and reviews by liking my Facebook page and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.